As a result of the Corona lockdown in Germany in spring 2020, cultural institutions of all kinds had to close their doors to visitors nationwide. Since then, these institutions and cultural initiatives have been fighting for their continued existence. The Federal Commissioner for Culture and the Media reacted to this with the project Neustadt, which aims to maintain the cultural sector in the long term. How was the situation of my institution, the Musikinstrumentenmuseum der Universität Leipzig, to which I will refer as MIMUL, before the Corona lockdown? Before the COVID-19 pandemic, the museum enjoyed an increasing number of visitors, be they families, daycare or school groups, or amateurs interested in music, students, tourists, scientists or professional musicians. It was possible to play some instruments, to learn about musical objects and the background of their creation via interactive and multimedia touchscreens, or to take part in a guided tour. In addition, there were numerous events in the city of Leipzig that attracted interested visitors to the museum, festivals such as the Bach Festival, the Early Music Festival, the Grassy Festival or the Summer Theatre, or major events such as the Museum Night or the Wave Gothic Festival, to name but a few. Since April 2018, the Mimul had been able to establish the so-called Second Thursday, an event in the afternoon at which current research projects of the staff and young researchers were presented monthly in the museum, in guided tours, concerts and lectures. Mimul's program work could not be continued during the museum's closure. The aforementioned events were cancelled. Visitor numbers plummeted and did not recover even with the short opening of the museum during summer 2020. Virtual offerings with touch screens and trying out musical instruments had to stop under pandemic conditions. During the second lockdown last autumn, we developed a new project. If the urban society cannot go to the museum, then the museum goes to the city. We applied for financial support for this project at the Neustadt Initiative and we got funding from the federal government. I call this project the Schaufenster von Ola, a player piano in a shop window. We all know this from the cinema. As if played by magic, the keys of the piano move and music resounds. Our lead role plays the Funola, a player piano made by the Hupfeld Company in 1913. It was built in Leipzig by the tens of thousands at that time and exported all over the world. For its pneumatic operation, the player had to pedal like a sewing machine. In this way, around 1900, not only masterpieces of the classical repertoire were brought into the living room, but also popular and dance music. This reflects a new claim to culture for all, which we may regard as a contribution to the democratization of art. And a liberation from lengthy lessons and tedious practice which are arguably prerequisites for any piano performance. Quote, what savings in time, money and bad humor are achieved by leaving 90% of scales and piano itches unplayed cannot be imagined. Is the witty comment of the composer Engelbert Humperdinck in the heated contemporary discussion about the merit and shortcomings of mechanical musical instruments. And already we are in the middle of the work of the museum, in the unplanned collateral effect of our digitization and research project, namely the repair and recommissioning of a player piano from the time before electrification.
shows, after its restoration in the Mimol, the Funola can play all by itself with a hoover. Watching it do so is downright captivating and irresistible. The pneumatic mo motors and bellows, the technical marvel of gears, connecting rods and piano mechanics are clearly visible to the astonished observer. The instrument is open and protected with transparent plexiglass panels. Fonola and Hoover are supposed to be in a window shop in Leipzig's pedestrian zone. The player piano is switched on by visitors using motion detectors behind the glass pane and switched off automatically. The performance is accessible without restrictions in Leipzig's pedestrian zone. The visitors are not endangered by any road traffic. They stand in the open air. They see the fascinating operation of the player piano and they hear its piano playing through the shop window, all white somewhat muffled. We regard this installation as an innovative transfer format, as an interactive advertising pillar that not only refers to the nearby museum on Johannesplatz and invites people there, rather we include the strolling people in our research questions. How does such an apparatus work? Which pianists play there? Where did a Fonola play for dancing in Leipzig city center around 1900? Where were these machines made? How did they get all over the world? Can I hear more of this music? We encourage people to stop and interact. We want them to talk to each other and to us. The research on the Fonola is of course a collateral result of the project Tasten, which I have already presented at SimSim meetings and would therefore like to touch on only briefly. Due to the pandemic, our work on the Tasten digitization project was interrupted in the final phase. Some work had to be postponed and we received funding for a prolongation from our sponsor. On the other hand, Working remotely resulted in a giant leap in the development of our data repository, the Music Explorer. In addition, the musical instruments and piano rolls were digitized. We digitized, gained a whole new perspective in their only online use by our visitors. Like, let me take a brief look at the digital offerings that have emerged from the Tasten project. The homepage of the Forschungsstelle Digital Organology provides access to the project Tasten and offers two short videos to introduce the topic. Furthermore, there are low threshold search entries via these icons. The visitor can get information concerning a choice of piano rolls, like works played by their composers, works composed for keyboard instruments, works played by female pianists, dance music, opera and so on. A choice of a topic will bring the visitor directly into the Music Explorer. Information concerning the properties of the piano roll can be found as well as a scan of the beginning, a scan of the whole piano roll, an audio of the played piece recorded on our Trifonola. Of course, the Music Explorer also offers information about Greek, the Hupfeld Company, etc. with all information concerning the Tasten project. Among these are the persons involved, the events linked to the project, items, etc. The visitor will also get a list of the related objects. A click results in an overview of these objects. 
organized in a timeline and a map, as well as in some pie charts that arrange the musical instruments in groups. On the left hand side there is a list of the musical instruments digitized in the Tasten project. Let us choose object 401-1097 Hammerklavier as an example. The visitor will get some basic information about the number of keys and the compass of the instrument, some basic me measurements, pictures, a top view of the instrument and an overview of the measurements we took. The visitor can also choose the keyboard symbol where he is able to play the original instrument by clicking on the keys. Or by using the computer keyboard or any other keyboard to play the instrument. The third example I would like to share is the virtual exhibition Lost and Found from the clarinets of the Prince. Again, the visitor can access it through the homepage of the Forschungsstelle Digital Organology. It all starts with this treasure box. What a find! Almost 200 years after it was made, the clarinet of the virtuoso Simon Hermstedt has been found again, an instrument that has been of interest to music researchers and musicians for almost as long. The clarinets of Prinz Günther von Schwarzburg-Sondershausen were lost for more than half a century, yet they are precious witnesses to a musical flowering that made the Sondershausen court famous far beyond the borders of Thuringia at the beginning of the 19th century. After a short introduction, the visitor can either choose to reach page after page or to get an overview of the exhibition. The contents of the exhibition are divided into four chapters. They dwell upon the constituents or actors of the historic situation, the instruments of the prince, the social upheavals after the Napoleonic Wars, and the demands of provenance research. On a second level, visitors can delve much deeper into the research. They can browse and click even further through the music historical context of this topic. The Music Explorer, the virtual research environment of digital organology, makes various offers on the topic of the exhibition. Let us start a brief tour through the first chapter of the exhibition. This page provides an overview of the persons or constituents. It uses historical sources to characterize them. It is a starting point to browse through makers, virtuosi, patrons, musicians. One of the most interesting findings was the picture of the virtuoso Simon Hermstedt, showing him with the very instrument that we could find recently, recently in the treasure box you have already seen. The page also offers a video to explain the features of the clarinets used by Hermstedt. You will get an insight in the busy diary of Simon Hermstedt. The page dedicated to Spohr, the composer, offers some musical examples and a short video with the famous clarinetist Sabine Meyer talking on the fourth clarinet concerto of Spohr and its challenges. On the next page we meet Prinz Günther, the patron. Günther was an ambitious amateur musician. He played the clarinet bass horn and various wind instruments, in whose development he was also interested. In 1835, Günther was forced to resign, as a result of which he retired to his country estate, where his personal clarinets were kept until they were lost during the Second World War. As, an, uh, as another sensation during our research for this exhibition, we could not only find the clarinet of Hermstedt, but also the lost clarinet of the prince. Günther 
commissioned both instruments at the workshop of Johann Streitwolf. Information about this instrument maker is provided here. Other persons in this network were, for example, Franz Tausch. Franz Tausch founded in Berlin the first conservatory for wind instruments and developed, in cooperation with the prince, a new instrument, the bass horn. You will always be able to find and study the historic resources online. Spohr's wife, Dorette Spohr, studied harp with Backofen, who is the author of the first German clarinet tutor. The virtuoso Hermstedt and Prince Günther had an exceptional reporter for the knowledge of music in Sondershausen, the lexicographer Ernst Ludwig Gerber. His lexicons are most important sources until today. Gerber not only introduces the players covered here, such as Hermstedt, but also spreads the myth of the unrivaled virtuosity of Spohr's first clarinet concerto. Furthermore, he reports on the development of musical instruments, which is, of course, an important source for our research. Again, the visitor is able to read the historic the historic sources online, like for example about the G-sharp key. In his Lebenserinnerungen, Memories from 1860, Louis Spohr's tell of his encounters with Johann Simon Hermstedt in changing places and of the different musical challenges, but always with great respect for the virtuoso wind player and full of gratitude for the fulfilling collaboration with him. Today, we do not have the time for a closer look at the object represented in chapter 2. Indeed, I would like to draw your attention to the context that we open up with digital humanity methods. If you search for persons, you will get an overview of 100 persons which are connected to this exhibition. A timeline will give you an overview of life periods and impact periods of the constituents. A map shows, for example, places of birth, places of activity, places of death. A visualization of the network show, for example, under the term dedication, which works Spohr dedicated to which persons. Several pie charts visualize, for example, the gender of the constituents or their musical activities, their professions. The overview shows who was playing the violin, who was a clarinetist, who was a clarinet maker. Of course, you can filter these results and go to the makers which are represented in the clarinet exhibitions. After this digression, I would like to return to the second chapter of our exhibition. It deals with the instruments of the prince. The overview shows the different topics concerning the instruments and their features. We show the very precious instruments of Hermstedt and Prince Günther, made from ebony and ivory. Two videos explain how we could identify the lost instruments and how they came into the museum. Today is not the time to guide you through this exhibition. It offers you videos and original sources, pictures and sound examples. Just feel free to dive into it. This exhibition was created as a part of a seminar lost and found in the master's program in musicology at the University of Leipzig, which was originally conceived by Professor Dr. Josef Foch and me for the summer semester 2020 and, postponed due to the pandemic, was finally held online in the summer semester 2021. In addition to the students, the project groups Tuba, Clarinette and Mimul Standards of the Digital Organology Research Center at the Musical Instrument Museum of the University of Leipzig, as well as a number of interns from various courses of study and universities in Halle, Martin Luther University, Leipzig, 
University of Music and Theater, and Potsdam, University of Applied Sciences, were involved in the preparation and implementation. According to the service learning concept of the research center, the, the interns were, were to get to know the interdisciplinary work for a university museum in research, teaching, and transfer. Thank you for your attention.